Coming up next on the Holistic Wealth Podcast. 70% of our immune system is housed in our gut. So if we know that, what if we did things throughout our day, Keisha, that will make that a better experience for our gut and avoid things that make it a worse experience? So when you're thinking about health, we're always talking or thinking cardiac, but I need you guys now to sit down and recognize just how important the GI tract and gut health is for all of us. You're listening to the Holistic Wealth Podcast with host Keisha Blair, author of Holistic Wealth and founder of the Institute on Holistic Wealth. And now here's your host, Keisha Blair. So Dr. Red Cross, welcome back to the Holistic Wealth Podcast. It's always so great to have you here. And I'm actually very excited about this topic because it's such an important one. And I think everyone listening in at one time or the other has had some gut complaints. So having some digestive relief tips is always a great thing. I just wanted to get started and get into it in terms of gut health. We all know that we absolutely need to have a healthy gut and it's so important for our body. But can you tell our listeners why? Having a healthy gut and really, really paying attention to our gut health is so critical. But let me tell you, you know, we talk about cardiac health every day and it makes sense, right? Because cardiac health is the most important thing for all of us. Number one cause of deaths and that sort of thing. But GI health is sometimes overlooked, I find, because GI health is so important, everyone. Because if you think about it, 70% of our immune system is housed in our gut. So if we know that, what if we did things throughout our day, Keisha, that will make that a better experience for our gut and avoid things that make it a worse experience? So when you're thinking about health, we're always talking or thinking cardiac, but I need you guys now to sit down and recognize just how important the GI tract and gut health is for all of us. That's amazing. And I just want to just zero in on just one point you just made, because I was just blown away by that, even yeah. though I think instinctively we all know. So 70% of our immune system, you said, is housed in the gut. And so, Dr. Red Cross, what exactly does that mean? Like, and when you talk about cardiac health and even other parts of the body, is it that then, you know, we absolutely need to focus? I'm glad that you mentioned that. So the fact that we're learning and we know that 70% of our immune cells are housed in our gut, what does that mean? Well, we have a layer in our gut. It's called a laminar appropriate. The point is, is that there is a special layer where our immune cells lie. Why is that important? Because the GI tract is the largest surface area in our bodies that's exposed to the outside. Think about it. We have our skin, which is a protectant. Our kidneys are protected deep. Our liver is protected deep in our core. But our GI tract is open to the environment. And so now that hopefully you all recognize, like, gosh, I didn't know that my gut had so many immune cells we'll be a little bit more mindful about what we put into our bodies each and every day. And the good thing is we can control this. So it's important because now that you know this, hopefully you'll think twice before you put some of these things in your body that you know are good for you. Absolutely. And that's so critical. And thanks for just expanding on that. So Dr. Red Cross, how do we know when we have bad gut health and kind of like, what are the symptoms should we look out for? Now that we know that 70% of our immune system is housed there. If I'm feeling these symptoms, I know definitely I need to do something more. Well, we'll think about it, everyone. Some of the things that we commonly can have, I have several patients who will have uh, a lot of gas production. I have other patients who have indigestion, feel like they eat their food, but it's just kind of still there. Some of that acid reflux, the heartburn, some of these things that we get each and every day, everyone, that sometimes we blow off. And hopefully now after your show, people will think twice about saying, you know, maybe my gut health is off. And what are some of the things that I should do to improve that? So a lot of the common symptoms that we get are some of the ones that let us know that we're not fully balanced like we should be with our gut health. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so if we think about, let's say, foods that help with gut health. What foods do you think we should avoid in terms of preventing these issues from arising? Well, look, so now that we're understanding that our GI tract is really open to the world, more so than any other organs, think about some of those things that aren't really good for us. Processed foods, a huge, huge, huge no-no. 
You know, I always tease Keisha and I always say any of those foods that end in these O's, let's say Doritos or Cheetos, no name, no purpose. But my point is those, anything that leaves powder on your fingers, don't eat it right? because those things are processed. So imagine this beautiful, healthy gut that's having those things laid on it. I bet you guys will put those chips down or what have you now. And so you want to make sure. But on the flip side, it gets back to those things, Keisha, that mom and, and dad told us many, many moons ago. Our fruits, <laughs> our vegetables, right. this meat involved lean meats, fish, fatty fish. Those things our gut loves everyone because we get so many good minerals and vitamins from them. And so it's important that those are the things that you want to kind of lie in your gut to make a difference in your GI health. Yeah, no, absolutely. And Dr. Red Cross, we've heard a lot about the gut brain axis. I had to ask you about that because it's just so prevalent now that the discussion around gut health and the brain and, you know, other issues like brain fog and, and stress and that feedback loop between the gut. I, I know when I'm stressed. Yep. My stomach just goes in knots. So, right. Uh, right. Exactly. So, can you just expand on that a bit for us in terms of that gut brain axis and why it's important? All right. So, what Keisha's talking about, everyone, and I'm so glad that she, she mentioned that, is that we're learning that there is a relationship. I've already talked about the immune system, but there's also a relationship. There's a nerve we have, one of our longest nerves. In fact, I think it's actually the longest nerve in our body, the vagus nerve. So, it's kind of that gut feeling that you get. Like I said, Keisha, before you go give that speech or what have you, you get everything churning. You have to run to the restroom and so forth. That's that gut brain axis. Now, the good thing is since we're talking about it, we're also recognizing that there are some wonderful, yummy things that we could do to make it better. One with diet and another bit with some things that are like natural probiotics, right? So probiotics, there's a lot of good ones on the market, but there's some things that we can do to balance that brain gut axis. What about things like kimchi? I'm a big Korean food lover. For those who like sour yogurt, these are those natural pre and probiotics actually that help to once again really lie in our gut with good bacteria that fight all the insults that we get each and every day. So when you're thinking again, as far as the immune system, think about that brain gut axis and what that really means as far as how you're feeling throughout the day when you really have a good day of, of digestion, a good day of eliminating and that sort of things and the joy that actually brings you. I mean, the GI tract is something that luckily, once again, we can all control and make a difference in our days if we think about this sort of thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, you mentioned indigestion and a range of things. And of course, bloating is something that is a huge issue for so many people. Absolutely. So, Dr. Red Cross, what causes bloating? And just in general, what are some of the other closer to the earth remedies? You mentioned some before. What are the other closer to the earth remedies that we can use to improve our gut health? So whenever you're getting bloating or gas production, and once again, think of things of like poor digestion, maybe because of the food choices. Think of things like food intolerances. Tons of people are lactose intolerant. We hear so much about gluten. Yeah. Things of that nature. So when you feel like you're bloating or you're having this increased gas production, think of different things. As you know, Keisha, I'm not a big fan of Western medicine. We don't need it, right? I mean, there's a role, everyone, of course. But when you're thinking of some of the acute symptoms that we get and some of the things you can get over the counter that I like to say are closer to the earth, that's why I kind of go to homeopathy when I'm talking to my patients. With homeopathy, number one, I don't have to worry about a lot of things such as drug-to-drug interactions side effects and that sort of thing. GI complaints are one of the most common reasons that people reach out to their doc, but sometimes they can't get there. So when I'm looking at things that Boron offers, and Boron is the number one company as far as homeopathy, I love that they have several digestive products. So I have a patient, in fact, Keisha, I had a patient yesterday, a lot of indigestion, some reflux, heartburn, and so forth. So with Boron, I can look at Acidil. Now, acidil is good for like occasional heartburn, some acid indigestion, upset stomach. Very, very common. My daughter loves it as she's going to college. A lot of that going on, right? Yeah. Then another common complaint that I get is that of diarrhea. Now, boron also has a product called diarrhea. The reason why this is important is that especially not only is it good when you have diarrhea, even if it's kind of that nervous sort of stomach, but it's also good for traveler's diarrhea. And for those who have a little bit of bloating as well, both of those are fine as long as your child is six years or long as the person 
is six years of age and older. And then back to your first question, when we were talking about the bloating and the gas production, Boron has another product that's great called Gasalia, which is great for the gas and the bloating and also for kids two years of age and older. The other thing I love about it is that you can take these GI products on the road with you. I mean, we're all traveling during yes. this time of year. We're trying yeah. to go out and bout. So with Acidil, Diarrhea, Gasalia, they're all melt away tablets. Mm -hmm. 60 tablets come in the in the box. So, you, you know, you have a nice uh, supply if these right. things kind of crop up. But when you're thinking of these little acute issues that come up, you have to think of homeopathy here because homeopathy is perfect for that sort of thing. And then see how you do. And if there's more, you can give your doctor a call. But once again, it's a great place to start. Yeah, no, absolutely. And there's so many medications that we take for different reasons that can impact our stomach, yeah. impact our gut lining. You know, how we're thinking about those you know, painkillers like Advil and Motrin and like different ones that we just reach for when we have pain or anything. So I get that, you know, like the natural remedies definitely would alleviate. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, some of the other meds, the problem with the the GI products, GI products that are over the counter, when you think of it, like I mentioned, acidil, so the things for acid or diarrhea for Imodium and Gasalia, it kind of takes a one size fits all approach. Yeah. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't. And so with with boron and the products that are offered on the GI line, the things, I can kind of compartmentalize what my patient is dealing with because sometimes they're not having all of the same symptoms at the same time. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, the acid to build, the uh, diarrhea and the gas area allow me to kind of partition what I'm doing to make the patient feel better a little bit. Yeah, no, absolutely. And as we're talking about gut health, I know a lot of people, especially this time of year, when we talk about almost close to back to school, Depending yep. on what culture you're from, people will start yep. thinking about detoxing before going. And if you're from the Caribbean, you'll hear things. Oh, yeah, you need a washout before. There you start. Go. All my <laughs> nurses, all my nurses are from Jamaica or yeah. Haiti. And I hear it. They ask me all the time. Yep. Yeah, it's funny, but it's true. I'm wondering if you can talk about detoxing. Does it really work to improve? Or gut health. All right. All right. So I'll see it this way, everyone. You guys can tell, like, I'm trying to think of the best way to say this. All right. So the point is, with the detox, some of the things that come out, it's kind of tough, everyone, because it's not necessarily uniform. That's but right. I will say this. The best way to kind of detox, the, the, the good Lord's made it possible with a lot of good fiber in our diets, potentially, if we reach for them through fruits right. and vegetables and water and so forth. So I will say this when people come to detox, they'll talk to me about detox or they'll tell me about the newfangled, this is the detox, here. this is what I need, this is all of those things. What I like to say is I'm excited that you're concerned about your health and you kind of want to cleanse things. Right. But I kind of say, look, look you know, like I said, we, with God's grace, there's some things that, that we can do naturally on our own at our dinner table, lunch table, or breakfast table to really do that exact same thing as far as the cleanse, if you could really, really be good at it. Blackberries, blueberry, great as far as that. So there's a lot of good things that we can go to. So I will say, I'm happy that you're considering a detox because you're trying to, to get healthier, stay healthy. But let's think of some things that we can do kind of in our cupboards or have in our cupboards and refrigerators that can make just as good as a difference. Okay, yeah, no, absolutely great. And so, Dr. Red Cross, most day-to-day -day digestive problems don't require a visit to the doctor. But when yeah. should we become alarmed that we need to book an appointment and go in? And I, I didn't want to end this session without mentioning irritable bowel syndrome and leaky gut. Yeah. Just because yeah. they're so prevalent. And so, are. if you could just, like, touch on that and, like, the signs of, irritable bowel because I know so many people you know are concerned about that let me tackle irritable bowel first and quickly Keisha because so irritable bowel everyone is what we call in medicine the diagnosis of exclusion it means like we've ruled out some of the major things yeah. and then we come back and say look we've ruled out the big things but the patient isn't feeling so well and that's when we know like all right probably irritable bowel now irritable bowel kind of has two different angles. It's constipation predominant or diarrhea predominant. It kind of depends on which one that you have. The good thing is, once again, some of the things that we've talked about today can really help to balance that. And in fact, staying even closer to the earth, there's been some good studies about peppermint oil being something that could be beneficial in those that have um, irritable bowel. 
So I usually tell everyone, if you start to have some of these GI symptoms we're talking about over three or four days, it's probably time to make sure am I missing something a bit more. On the acid side, do I have a bacteria in my stomach? On the diarrhea time, do right. I have an overgrowth of the good bacteria? On the gas side, things, something I have a food intolerance to. So you see what I did there, guys? Each and every one of those three things can be a little bit more, but they typically happen when your symptoms are taking a little bit too long to get better when you've already tried something like homeopathy over the counter and you don't feel like you're back to yourself yet. Awesome. And these are such good tips. And of course, we have some more of Dr. Red Cross's tips for a healthy gut in the show notes. So feel free after you listen to this to check out the show notes. Check out Dr. Red Cross's website. Dr. Red Cross, can you just remind us about your website, social media, where people can find you? For everyone, my social media is at Dr. Ken, K-E-N, Red Cross. Whether it's Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn or what have you, my website is drkenredcross.com. Um, and by all means, I really mean it. Feel free to reach out on social media with any questions or concerns. I love meeting meeting new people. Absolutely. So good to have you here to discuss that very important topic, Dr. Red Cross. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me on. Stay well, everyone. The Holistic Wealth Podcast with Keisha Blair is brought to you by. Have you joined the Institute on Holistic Wealth? If you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Choose your membership plan at the Institute on Holistic Wealth slash memberships to join. As a member, you'll get access to free worksheets, advice, coaching, and an intentional design workshop. As you start to live a more holistically wealthy lifestyle, you'll want to stay for a very long time. So go to Institute on Holistic Wealth slash memberships to join. If you haven't read the book yet, pick up a copy of the award-winning best-selling Holistic Wealth 36 Life Lessons to help you recover from disruption, find your life purpose, and achieve financial freedom. 